dear learners uh, greetings from iit guwahati we are in the moocs course power plant system engineering module 2 vapor power system part 3 so in this lecture our main focus would be to discuss about heat absorption concepts in water tube boilers so in our last lecture we have exhaustively talked about different components of the water tube boiler now in this lecture we are going to uh, summarize different components such as sup superheater attempter reheater and economizer so these uh, four components are nothing but a heat exchanger unit and they are been interpreted in different forms we will see how or under what circumstances or what are the different criteria or what are the different forms in the uh, subsequent part so let us revisit which we discussed in the, our last lecture that is water tube boiler so essentially a water tube boiler has important components like steam drum superheater reheater economizer air preheater and on uh, uh, of course we have um, uh, header down comers and risers so the main aspects of our lecture today that will be focusing on three important parts one is superheater reheater and economizer of course steam drum is also the part of it so in general the modern steam generators produce the very high pressure the modern steam power systems or steam generators operate in the pressure range of 70 bar for saturated steam and pressure range of 240 bar for superheated steam so they have uh, the steam generator is nothing but the integration of different components like for um, main integration to furnace economizers boiler superheaters air reheater and air preheater so our main goal in this lecture is that we will be mainly focusing on the superheater part so let us uh, see uh, before you go for those superheater component uh, let us think about uh, in a broad sense what do you mean by heat absorption in the water tube boilers so basically our main job is to add heat to the working fluid in this case is water and heat addition takes place in a heat exchanger units like economizer which is located in this line and here if you can see here the economizer is located at the the first basic heat exchanger that supplies water to the steam drum and down comer and riser circuit gives the uh, saturated steam uh, superheater uh, gives the superheated steam and reheater uh, the uses the bypass from the turbine and reheating again in the same steam generator unit so essentially speaking the feed water from high pressure heater enters the economizer where it receives heat from the outgoing fluid glasses till saturated liquid stage then fed to the drum then saturated liquid falls through the down comer circuit into the bottom of the header and moves through the again through the riser riser circuit where the water is partially boiled back in the drum and saturated steam goes out of the steam drum then from there it enters to the superheated steam now from the superheated heater unit it supplies to directly gives to the is fed to the turbine so essentially speaking the role of superheater is to keep this dryness fraction to this maximum possible extent so that there is no water content in the boiler now let us uh, think about this uh, uh, water tube boiler in a thermodynamic diagrams so whatever we have discussed so far like what happens in the economizer 
or a boiler. Many times this boiler in this unit we also call as a evaporator, then superheater and reheater. So, if you look at this thermodynamics TS diagrams, we see that point 1 refers to the liquid phase of water, point number 2 refers to the saturated liquid, point number 3 refers to the saturated vapor, point 4 is saturated uh, sorry superheated vapor, uh, again point 5 is the uh, saturated vapor and point 6 is the superheated vapor. So, uh, what it uh, means is that for a kg of steam heat is absorbed in the economizer which is in liquid phase, then evaporator which is liquid vapor phase or latent heat of vaporization and then in the superheater heater that is gas phase. The multi stage expansion from low pressure turbine involves reheating of steam from saturated state to superheating state in a reheater. So, the basic idea is that the reheater concept is also introduced in the steam generator unit of the water tube boiler. Now, if you want to calculate the uh, heat absorption in a water tube boiler per kg of steams and, if, and since you know the state points 1, 2, uh, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So, using the steam table you can calculate these enthalpy values and these enthalpies are um, values depends on the state point coordinates of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Now, once you uh, know the enthalpies, then you can calculate for component wise what is the heat load. So, uh, and uh, the total heat load is nothing but the um, addition of all these four component loads and then we can find out uh, what is the percentage share of for economizer which is evaporator or we can also this is also many times many books also refer evaporator as boiler. This boiler because uh, the word evaporator is normally used in the refrigeration systems and where the evaporation of refrigerant takes place, but here again the boiler or evaporation word uh, I mean concept remains same with a view that it is it is from uh, steam and water unit. Then uh, we can calculate the superheater load and we can calculate the reheater load as so, percentage share can be calculated by knowing this their enthalpy values. Now, let us focus on the most important component of steam generating unit that is superheater. So, superheater is uh, nothing but a kind of a heat exchanger. Uh, so, once we get the saturated steam from the steam drum at state point 3, it enters to the superheater. So, this is basically from stream drum uh, schematically if you look at this figure from the stream drum uh, the saturated steam enters at point 1 and superheated steam leaves at point 2. So, these are called as uh, superheater coils that means when it passes through this superheated tubes it interacts with the flue gases which is essentially at high temperature T G 1 and uh, by um, taking heat from the flue gases, the temperature of the steam also further increases. So, thereby, uh, thereby we also need to find out uh, or we also need to do the energy balance for the flue gases and the mass of the for the steam requirement. So, this particular problem can be viewed as a heat exchanger problem and this heat exchanger is nothing but a counter flow heat exchanger. So, in this case we see that along this uh, length or area, uh, if temperatures are plotted or temperature profiles are done for steam and uh, flue gases, we can see that flue gases temperature falls down uh, from T g 1 to T g 2 and whereas, steam temperature increases from T s 1 to T s 2. So, thereby we can model this uh, the superheater tube as a counter flow heat exchangers. Now, let us see what are the different types of arrangements that a superheater can have like you have seen those coils superheated tubes. So, they are nothing but three types one is that means the heat exchange can take place 
pure convective mode, pure radiant mode, pure convective mode means it is called as convective superheated, pure radiant mode means it is called they are called as radiant superheated, pedant type superheated means means it is a combined version of uh, convective and radiative mode. So, essentially if you look at this T S diagram, you see here that superheating uh, units operates between state point 1 and 4 because already we have saturated steam that enters at state 1 and we superheated um, the state 4 the steam leaves. So, through this the heat addition takes place. So, basically if you want to go for very uh, super very degrees of superheated is very high then we have to go for radiant type or if your degree of superheated is less that means somewhere you have to stop this superheating at point 2 then convective superheating uh, heater is sufficient. But in some cases uh, we also require both type. What does this mean? That means it has been shown that but one one important thing is that while talking while men increasing the steam temperatures we must uh, see that there is a characteristics that when the steam flow rate increases or the mass flow rate of the steam increases and this uh, increase uh, with increase in the steam flow rate the outlet temperature if you are using the convective separator this uh, outlet temperature characteristics curves is in a increasing trend. Uh, whereas, if you use radiant superheater the with increase in the steam flow rate the outlet temperature drops, but this is not the uh, essentially the user requirement. So, user wants a flat curve like for the range of operation let us say 40 to 80 percent of steam flow rate you need to have a flat type of curve whereas, uh, the temperature remains has to be flat. So, for that case the combined superheaters are most beneficial and they are called pedant type superheaters. Uh, so, that is the main advantage so, like if you see this type of configurations uh, a pedant type superheaters is a like a vertical inverted tube and this gas flow uh, comes. So, in partially it is uh, the mode of heat transfer is partially convective and partially radiative that means initial version it is convective and uh, um, once it is already superheated to some extent it is it has to be operated in a radiant mode. Whereas, uh, in a purely horizontal type superheater which is which is mainly operates in a convection mode. So, this is how the uh, configurations of superheated heaters are required for the application uh, of uh, or increasing the increasing the temperature of steam. Now, whatever I have explained if I have uh, to read out then we can say that heat absorption uh, uh, techniques in the superheaters can be listed as follows. So, they are classified as convective, radiative or combined mode, heat is taken from gas to the steam, convective modes are normally located in the convective zone of the furnace that means in the entire steam generator unit it is mainly closer or just ahead of the economizer and so this convective superheaters are main normally referred as primary superheaters where the saturated steam is uh, from the um, from the drum is admitted now after convective superheating the stream proceeds towards the radiant superheater which is placed uh, in the radiant zone of the furnace. So, radiant zone means this uh, this means it is close to the wall of the furnace so, to, so as to absorb the heat only by radiations. Now, steam leaving from radiant uh, superheater goes to D superheater where it is highly pure water is spread to the steam at a desired quantity so as that last stage of superheating or combined mode is normally done. So, that is called as pedant type superheaters. So, this spraying is again required for the controlling of stream and I will come back to this point at the later stage of this lectures why it is required, why this spraying of water is required in a pedant type superheaters. And this uh, normally this pedant type superheater is 
called as secondary superheaters. So, at the end of uh, the, the superheating units, the constant flow rate of steam should go at a fixed temperature. So, that is the essential requirement when the steam enters into the turbine. Now, let us give more uh, view to this convective superheating uh, co concept where heat transfer is mainly co convection and this is the most uh, simplest type of mode in which heat exchange can take place. So, I have already mentioned the heat is taken from the flue gas thereby flue gas temperature drops and uh, steam temperature increases from T S 1 to T S 2. Now, coming back to uh, heat exchange uh, or bit of for this superheating uh, heaters, one can model it as a heat exchanger model. First thing, one can find out the convective superheating from these equations, how much heat is being added during the convection superheating from 1 to 2 that can be calculated as the mass of the steam into enthalpy difference that is H 2 minus H 1 and that is equal to the energy that is lost by the flue gases. And this flue gas is normally modeled uh, as a m times C p delta t. So, C p is the specific heat of, of the flue gases m g that is mass flow rate of the flue gases T g 1 and T g 2 the temperatures at the inlet and the exit of the Mm, superheater. This is one aspect. Now, with respect to superheated uh, heater unit, this can be modeled that Q C S H can be equal to U 0 times A 0 delta T L m T D. So, L m T D is nothing but the logarithmic temperature difference and that is we refer for a counter flow heat exchanger for using this figure. So, L m T D is defined by delta T i and delta T i occurs at this uh, one unit and delta T is the exit. So, at the inlet, uh, uh, inlet it is T g 1 minus T s 2 and at the exit it is T g 2 minus minus T s uh, 1. So, knowing this delta T i and delta T e, we can calculate this um, logarithmic mean temperature difference by this expression. Now, what is u 0? u 0 is the, the overall heat transfer coefficient and this overall heat transfer coefficient is related to the convective heat transfer coefficient and its uh, thermal conductivity and convective heat transfer coefficient for outer wall and for inner wall and this is the thick along the thickness. So, essentially uh, this these are nothing but the resistance offered for this heat exchange to happen. So, uh, now once you know u 0, uh, you can find out knowing this heat, convective heat transfer coefficients at the inlet and the outer surface, inlet surface and outer surface of the tube and along this conduction takes place in the along the thickness of the tube. So, basically if you can say this is your thickness of the tube and here this, this is inner part and this is outer part of the tube and essentially this is your inner diameter and this is your thickness that is x w. So, for this expression you find h i which is inner convective heat transfer coefficient at the inner wall, h o is the convective at heat transfer coefficient at the outer wall and thick the during in within this thickness the conduction takes place. So, basically here we have flue gases, here we have steam. So, heat transfer takes place from flue gases to steam. So, so thereby you can model this as uh, uh, convective mode at the outer surface, convective mode at the inner surface of the tube and then along this thickness it is a conduction mode of heat transfer. So, this then uh, and, and for the outer surface and, and if how many what is the size of uh, this A 0 that means, what is the size of the tube that can be call, called as outer surface area of the tube 
that is nothing but number of tubes into pi d0 into L that is surface area that is outer diameter of the tube. And of course, mass flow rate of the steam can be calculated by number of tubes into pi by 4 d i square into uh, V s into uh, V s is the velocity of the steam small v s is the specific volume of the steam at that condition. So, most of the data will be given to us and accordingly we can use these equations to design the heat exchanger. To design the heat exchanger means you need to calculate the what is the area requirement, what is the outer diameter, what is the number, the number of tubes required all, all these parameters. Now, another uh, same philosophy can be extended for radiant superheater type, but there the for radiant superheater uh, we have to use this uh, equation for radiations that is uh, sigma a t times f f w t f to the power 4 minus uh, t w to the power 4. So, this is the radiation heating and, uh, and, and using these equations uh, that can be correlated with respect to what is the rise during uh, from the point 2 to 3 because 2 to 3 normally we use radiant superheater. And this radiant superheater is means that the steam uh, is allowed to see the uh, surface of the wall uh, that means under at the wall the radiation is most predominant. So, the steam is allowed to be exposed to the uh, wall side. So, that is the reason the radiant superheaters are located in the radiant zone of the furnace that provides greater heat absorption by radiative mode of heat transfer. So, in other words for a higher degree of superheat the uh, we require that the steam should be exposed to the high temperatures to view the combustion flames. Then moving further we can say there are of course, there is another limitations to it that for radiant superheater your velocity to, to get the maximum benefit of radiant uh, radiation mode of heat transfer the steam velocity should not exceed 7.5 meter per seconds and their heat transfer coefficients uh, are 3.14 uh, kilowatt meter square with maximum heat flux of 116 kilowatt per meter square and this flame temperature is almost independent of load. So, as but as the steam flow increases the heat transfer per unit pass flow rate is decreases. So, this is the characteristic score when you when you increase the steam flow rate uh, the outlet temperature drops. So, this is the biggest disadvantage for a radiation mode of heat transfer. So, basically a most appropriate choice is to use the combination mode that is convective and radiative uh, mode of superheaters and such uh, superheaters that are known as pedant type superheaters. So, in a pedant type superheater that means normally it is in the region of 3 to 4 the when you go for higher degrees of superheating. We see that pedant superheaters they are like inverted U tubes are exposed to the gas flow. So, and if you see this uh, thermodynamic diagram your the gas temperature flue gas temperature drops from T g 1 to T g 2, but uh, if you look at the steam side. So, the steam side it is from T s T 1 to T s T T 2 it is goes as a convective mode and here they a counter flow type of steam enters. So, that the curve is little deviated from this actual rise. So, basically speaking we are going to uh, going to mix these two type of streams in a such a way. So, we so as to require the flat curve. So, how we are going to do that I will come back in the sub subsequent slides. Uh, so, that is the uh, that is the most uh, th that is what normally is done to control the temperature at the outlet of the superheaters and we need to have essentially flat get a flat curve that is flat steam outlet um, temperatures which is insensitive to the load change. So, basically pedant type superheaters we can say 3 4 heating is made as a counter flow 
one fourth heating is considered as a parallel flow. So, this side we say it is a counter flow and from this side we say it is a parallel flow. So, if you look at steam and gas point of view from this side it is a parallel flow from this side it is a counter flow and this is the most economical arrangement operations for safe operation of the thermal failure of the materials. And this is what I was emphasizing what how do you get this gen combined superheater pedant type superheater in a flat curve. So, that is what we call this as a process which is called as attempression. So, in certain case we require the convective uh, and radiant superheaters are arranged in series to yield a flat final curve over uh, wide, final temperature curve over a wide range of temperatures. So, attempression is a method of a reduction of steam temperature uh, that is done by two methods one is surface attempter other is the spray or direct contact type attempter. Now, the surface at attempter is nothing but a cell and tube type of heat ex exchanger. So, what happens here is like this. So, if you look at uh, the uh, conceptually uh, this is your steam drum and from this steam drum the uh, steam comes out saturated steam comes out and enters to this superheated zone. And the superheated zones are two types primary and secondary. Primary is normally made as convective type and secondary is made of radiant type, but not exactly radiant pedant types. So, basically pedant type combines radiant and convective mode which is partly counter flow and partly parallel flow. Now, uh, if you look at this curve in one case in, the in a convective superheating mode that is in the primary the outlet temperature increases with increase in the steam flow rate, but in the radiant mode outlet temperature drops, but in a to, con to have this flat curve we need to do dependent type superators. But then what happens controlling the temperature becomes vital because these two are very huge temperature difference. So, for that reason what we normally do that between primary and secondary superheater there is a primary superheater it gives a steam temperature of this range and secondary superheater that uh, that that is the final requirement let us say 550 degree centigrade need to achieve. Now, in between now if you do not use this attempter then what may happen is that this uh, the curve will keep on increasing after 550 that means 550 is the point A that is landmark point. So, beyond that the temperature should not go but as the as and continuously with increasing the load rate also this should remain flat at this point. And for that reasons we use the surface attempter or direct contact type attempter to bring back this flat curve. So, how do you do? We do by a uh, method called as spray attempter cooling where some collected water from the steam drum is being sprayed. So, that to keep this thing in a flat curve, so that unnecessarily the temperature should, should not rise rather it should lead to a flat uh, curve. And the amount of this flatness we can control by controlling the, uh, the addition of the um, uh, mass um, water or water spring mass into the main steam. So, uh, and this is again an another unit called as a cell and tube heat exchanger that collects the steam from the pedant type of super superheater and regulates the temperature for a flat curve and this temperature is regulated achieved by controlling the diverted steam. So, what is done is some portion of the steam from the primary or secondary su superheater is diverted to cell and tube heat exchanger that contains boiler water in the cell. So, the steam gives up some heat to the water and then the remixes the primary stream upon entering in the into the secondary heater. So, basically uh, primary and secondary uh, between primary secondary heating we give a kind of a heat uh, spray cooling. So, that the temperature uh, of the this temperature of the entire unit does not go beyond the point A. And again what we have the uh, the location of this attempter. 
means basically attempt rotor can be either side either type like surface or spray or direct contact type they can be located before primary superheater after secondary superheater or in between super primary and secondary superheater so this is the three locations this attempt rotor can be uh, used so the first choice is uh, first choice first choice is means if it is used before before means it can lead to uh, the condensation of saturated steam on the boiler surface before it enters the condenser last choice means it is used in the after uh, superheater then controlling the steam temperature exceeds the final desired value so if you look at after here the already it has crossed so then the best way is that before it leaves the superheater entire temperature control has to be done in such a way that a uh, the curve relatively remains flat so this is what we say spray cooling uh, or type of attempt rotor but there are, there are another uh, way of doing this similar practice is through gas recirculations so uh, many a times what happens uh, the gas recirculation is used in which gas from some point downstream of the economizer outlet is recirculated back to the furnace by a fan so by doing this we call this as a gas tempering so essentially this this also does this cooling can happen uh, by a gas mode from, uh, from the economizer unit and that is that process is called gas tempering okay now let us think about a most effective way of attempt attempt rotation that is the second method in which we we call it as a spray or direct type attempt rotor where we can reduce the steam temperature by spraying the low temperature water from the boiler or economizer exist in the line between primary and secondary superheaters so what happens is here there is a steam flow and there is steam flow comes from the primary superheater and it enters to the secondary superheater that is ms plus mw and relatively if you can say that this line this this mass flow rate has to follow this flat curve which essentially means that we must regulate how much water needs to be sprayed and this arrangement is done through a spray nozzle so this spray nozzle arrangement configuration is a venturi type nozzles and in which water is sprayed through this venturi type nozzle of course steam along this steam path so along this steam path when is steam comes and it interacts with the water its temperature drops so when it temperature drops the final number that is final value which is ms plus mw which we get that is the essential requirement of of load and for that load the temperature is obtained as a relatively flat curve and typically the uh, temperature requirement is about 550 degrees centigrade after superheating unit and most of the cases and this uh, depending on the requirement we can control how much mass flow rate needs to be added so more or less this is a this has been seen to be a most effective way and most rapid and sensitive means of temperature control in a steam generator then a simple energy balance equations can be applied because you see here that referring to this figure uh, steam flow rate is uh, ms and when it enters at enthalpy let's say hs1 and mass of the water which enters from the um, from the let's say steam drum which is mw at that pressure we can have this enthalpy value that is hw then then the total mass that go goes out is ms plus mw but at an enthalpy hs1 so essentially speaking the from this point to this point there is drop in temperature and pressure remains same so
So, to maintain the press pressure to be same at entry point relatively this uh, the uh, we have similar pressures from this water inflow and the steam inflow. So, if you if there is no involvement of work heat and uh, changes in the kinetic or potential energy then you can simply frame a uh, the energy balance equations that is m h h s 1 plus m w dot h s w h w is equal to m s dot plus m w dot h s 2. Okay. So, this is the what the attempt is required uh, for a superheating unit to generate a flat curve. So, with this viewpoint let us see uh, some numerical problems that can be attempted in the topic of superheater attempter and of course, uh, the heat loads on the water tube boiler. So, the first problem talks about a modern steam generator unit in which super coil heater coil has to be incorporated. Its dimensions are given like internal diameter 52 mm and thickness 5 mm. Exit condition of the steams are as follows that means, steam uh, um, exit conditions are 60 bar and 500 degree centigrade, flow velocity 15 meter per second mass flow rate 75 kg per second. Due to material restrictions uh, the uh, in the heat flux uh, the coil should not exceed 150 kilowatt per meter square. So, what is the idea is that if you, you ha we have no information about the flue gas we have only information about the superheater coil. So, basically this is the superheated coil, the steam enters at point 1 sorry it is called saturated vapor which enters from the steam drum. and the steam exit conditions in the superheated coil is a superheated vapor and that is state to 60 bar 500 degree centigrade and it enters through these tubes in a continuous manner. And this side we have flue gases of Mg dot Tg1 and flue gases leaves Mg, Mg dot and Tg2. That means, heat is taken from flue gases to this uh, steam and essentially speaking it is a convective type of uh, superheating where we can draw this curve we are at the point 1 steam requirement is at point 2 and this heat in a temperature entropy diagram this heat we called as Q S H superheated load and this Q S H is to be supplied by Q dot flue gases. Of course, no information about the flue gases in these things. So, we do not need to bother about this flue gas as of now for this problem, but what is needs to be done is is that we need to find out uh, what is the heat load and from the heat load you need to find out what is the number of coils or length of the each coil. So, the solution has to start you have to keep steam table intact. So, using the steam table what we can find out at state 1. So, at state 1 we say it is saturated vapor.
at 60 bar at this point. So, this will give you H1 as Hg. So, you have to refer saturated vapor water table and this value will be 2784.3 kilo joule per kg and state 2 which is normally at this point it is superheated vapor and that coordinate is 60 bar 500 degree centigrade. So, superheated table will give you H2 as 3422.2 kilo joule per kg. Of course, we require specific volume, please note down that. So, that number is 0 0.05665 meter cube per kg. Then you also know mass flow rate that is of the steam that is 75 kg per second. Then you can find out what is QSS that is m dot s into h 2 minus h 1. By inserting the value we arrive at it is 47842 kilowatt, but we see that this is the material heat flux on the coil should not exceed that means uh, kilowatt per meter square. So, accordingly we must find out the area surface area of coil. So, that is A 0 that has to be uh, total that is Q S H divided by 150 kilowatt per meter square. So, this number becomes 319 meter square. So, once you know the area then we also require uh, some information we also require the uh, mass flow rate. So, from the mass flow rate we can calculate from the mass flow rate equation which is nothing but A 2 V 2 by A 2 area into velocity divided by specific volume and that mass flow rate value is given 75 and A 2 is nothing but number of tubes n into pi by 4 d i square and V 2 is equal to 15 meter per second and d i is given as 52 mm that is 0 0.052 meter and uh, we also know small v 2 specific volume is known. So, by putting this value we can say n times pi by 4 d i square is equal to m dot s into V 2 by V 2 and from this equation we can calculate what is n. By inserting this value we can calculate n as 134 that is number of turns in the coil for which heat flux should not exceed as 150 kilowatt per meter square should be 134. Then this A 0 surface area A 0 can be written as n into pi by 4 uh, sorry pi d 0 into pi into d 0 outer diameter into length. Now, here outer diameter of this tube can be calculated as inner diameter plus 2 t. 
So, if you look at this tube, uh, this is your thickness, this is your d i and this is t and this is d o. So, d 0 would be d i plus 2 t. So, this becomes d 0 uh, is 52 plus 5 plus 5. So, this is 62 mm. Now, putting in this equation, so we can calculate that L is equal to A 0 divided by n times pi into D 0. So, we have A 0 as 319 meter square, n is 134, D 0 is 62 mm. So, putting this value, we can say L is equal to approximately 12 meter. So, basically this is asked what is the number of coil that is 134 length of each coil it is 12 meter. Now, next question is about the spray attempter which regulates the flat curve for the superheated unit. So, what does this if you refer this figure we have this side we have secondary superheater. and this side we have primary superheater to regulate this flat curve we or it is a uh, like this is not um, flat curve we have a spray attempter for temperature control of the steam. So, basically speaking what we see is it steam enters the attempter at 180 bar 500 degree 20, 520 degree centigrade that is m dot s enters at 180 bar 520 degree centigrade and spray water comes from the drum at m dot w comes from the drum that is about 190 bar. So, more or less these two temperature are uh, similar because uh, they have to they have to come out at same pressure of 180 bar and but temperature has to drop down 480 degree centigrade. So, to control this 480 degree centigrade we mu we are adding water into this through this Venturi type attempted. So, basically we also require steam table to find like inlet, steam inlet which is 180 bar and 520 degree centigrade. So, this will give you HS 1 as 3378 kilojoule per kg steam outlet that is 180 bar and 480 degree centigrade. So, this will give you HS2 requirement as 3203.2 kilo joule per kg and inlet water inlet that is saturated water at 190 bar. So, saturated pressure table can be referred to find out H w or H f is equal to H w at 190 bar this number is 1776.5 kilo joule per kg. Now, we also know that per kg unit mass of the steam that means m dot s is equal to 1 kg per second. So, the working equation is the energy balance
that is m dot s h s 1 plus m dot w h w is equal to m dot s plus m w into h s 2. So, um, so this equation we can simplify as uh, dividing by m s. So, we say it is h s 1 is 3378 plus mw by ms into hw, hw is 1776.5 is equal to 1 plus mw by m dot s into hs2, hs2 is 3203.2. So, by solving we can say m w by m dot s is equal to 174.8 divided by 1426.7 and this number is 0 0.122. So, in other words we say mass of the spray water requirement per kg of steam is 0 0.122 kg per second. And this mass must be required to regulate the steam temperature to be maintained at 4, 4, 480 degree centigrade. And last problem is a very simple problem which this is this problem is dealt with heat absorption concept for a modern steam generator. So, what the problem statement says is that we need to estimate the heat loads for modern steam generator that involves an economizer, that involves a boiler or evaporator unit, that involves a superheater. And of course, the we also have a reheater unit. So, basically steam which is at liquid state enters into the generator unit in an economizer. It goes up to state point 2 which is the saturated liquid at point 2. Then at same pressure the steam uh, leaves at the uh, evaporator or boiler at state point 3 and this heat uh, transfer is mainly latent heat and from 3 to 4 it is the superheating uh, heater unit and again from 5 to and after expansion process in the turbine the reheater unit dominates here. So, from 5 to 6 and it goes to state 6. So, basically we have the state point requirement and for each state point we need to calculate this enthalpy coordinates and for, for each of the enthalpy coordinates once we find out we can equally calculate the what is the heat load share. So, for this again suggested to use steam table. So, so state 1 which is liquid water 45 degree centigrade. So, for this liquid water referring to the saturated liquid value we can say H 1 as 188.45 kilo joule per kg and state 2. State 2 is saturated liquid enters into the boiler or evaporator at 8 mega Pascal. This is saturated liquid 8 mega Pascal. So, saturated liquid table will give you H 2 as H f value at this pressure that is 1316.6 kilo joule per kg. State 3 is saturated vapor at again at same pressure 8 mega Pascal. So, here it is latent heat of rejection or latent heat of addition. So, H 3 is equal to at same pressure we say H g, H g value is 275.8.27. Two seven five eight kilo joule per kg. State four 
is superheated vapor that is at 8 mega Pascal and 480 degrees centigrade. So, H 4. So, H 4 value is 3348.4. And state 5 is saturated liquid after entry from the high pressure turbine. So, uh, that is at 0.7 mega Pascal saturated vapor. So, H5 2,7 63.5. So, state 6 reheater. So, reheater is uh, operating at same pressure uh, superheated vapor at 0.7 mega Pascal and 440 degree centigrade. So, this will implies H 6 is equal to 3353.3 kilojoule per kg. Now, we have all the state point enthalpy values. We can find out for case 1 economizer Q E C is equal to H 2 minus H 1. So, this value is 1128.15 kilojoule per kg. Then we have boiler or sometimes is called as evaporator Q evaporator is equal to H 3 minus H 2. So, this value is 141.5 kilojoule per kg. Then superheater. Q superheater is equal to H4 minus H3. So this number is 590.4 kilojoule per kg reheater Q reheater is H 6 minus H 5. So, this value is 589.9 kilojoule per kg. So, adding this 4 we can say Q total. Also, we can calculate that is H 4 minus H 1 plus H 6 minus H 5. So, this number is 3449.95 kilojoule per kg. So, we have all the state point values. So, we can find out percentage share that is Q economizer by Q that number is 1128.15 divided by 3749.95. So, this is 30 percent. Similarly, Q evaporator by Q this value would be 38 percent. Q superheater divided by Q this is 16 percent and Q reheater by Q is 16 percent. So, basically speaking uh, this is the heat load distributions across different components of a steam uh, generator unit. So, with this I conclude this lecture for today. Thank you for your attention.